What you got for me? Brotherhood of Steel better stay out of good. Excuse day. me. Don't be shy now. Chances are we have whatever you're looking for. I'll take a look, sure. It's a little bit of everything. Clear. Don't worry. I only test the weapons on customers I don't like. Feel free to browse. I've got a few minutes to browse. A gun for every occasion. Ship? <laughs> Your lady friend there. She's the dame who writes public occurrences, right? Good stuff. I always did appreciate good investigative journalism. Are you going to hang out in the lobby all day again, or are you actually going to go down and do some work? Being available to the customers is work. It's not all about cooking chems, Claire. It's not all about sampling those chems either. Maybe if you stopped using, you could focus. What? Where's the fun in cooking it if you ain't using it? My mistake. Oh man, someone new! You need some jet, man? Home brewed? Reasonable prices? What's Jet? You don't know? It's the best. It just hypercharges everything. Like you got the speed of ten men in one inhaler. What other kinds of chems do you have? Well, you got your medicinal shit. Rad X and Rad Away for radiation sickness. Hey, do you think that's why they call it Rad X? That's far out. Mentats are for the sciency types, you know, eggheads looking for a boost to solve big problems. Buff outs for the muscle men. Fuck, just try it all is what I say. You have any work? 
Yeah, actually, you might be perfect. You know the gunners, right? The high-end mercenaries? Well, a few of them were talking about scavenging around that old hallucinogen building. I mean, just think about that name. There's got to be some shit there that's out of this world. You get me something, I pay you 200 caps. Your offer's a little low, Fred. All right, let's make it 250. Not good enough. You said there's already a crew of mercs there. I did say that, didn't I? How about 300? Good neighbors full of chem addicts. You have plenty of money to fund this job. Okay, okay. You got me. 400 caps, that's all I can put out. You said gunners are out there? The blackest hearted mercs around, friend. Well armed, organized. So, you know, make sure they don't catch you. All right, Fred, we have a deal. You're the best, the absolute best. I just clean up around here. Hi. What? No, it can't. It, 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 it's you from Sanctuary Hills, right? Wait, are you from Vault Tech? I am Vault Tech. Twenty years of loyal service, and now look at me. I wasn't on the list, but you, look at you. Two hundred years. And you're still perfect! How? How's that possible? The vault had these pods that froze us in place. I only thought out recently. What? vault -Tech never told me that. Unbelievable. Well, I had to get to the future the hard way. Living through the filth, the decay. And the bloodshed. Look at me. I'm a ghoul. A freak. I'm so sorry. I didn't know this would happen. You know, you're the only other person I met from before. I, uh, I... Oh, God. I've been so alone here. No Commonwealth settlement once a ghoul with 200 years of vault tech sales experience. Hey, you know you could head back to Sanctuary. I'll come visit. I promise. Really? You... you will? Okay, I'll head over there right now. You promise you'll come visit, right? I'll see you there. Hey there. You're new around good neighbor, if I'm not mistaken. What do you think of the place? It's changed a lot since the last time I was here. Been here before? Well, good neighbors definitely come up in the past few years. Mostly since Hancock took over. Name's Rufus. I do repairs around here. Keep the robots running, sell a bit of scrap, that sort of thing. I'm usually here or drinking that swill Charlie slinging at the third rail. Looking for parts? I also might have a job for you if you're interested. What's the job? Don't know if you've had the beer down at the third rail, but I swear Charlie must have found it in a sewer. Found this hollow tape while doing repairs at the Rexford. Delivery notice for a brewing machine. Pre-war. Thing is, it was never delivered. Well, with all the bombs and all. Done some asking around, and I think it might still be intact. Which is where you come in. I'm in. Let's do it. Great. So. 
brewing machine is in the basement of an old bar called the Shamrock Tap House. When you leave town, make your way around east till you hit Atlantic. Great big green sign. Bring it back here when you're done. Hey, Cleo. Remain Didn't silent during the speech. Rowski the other day. Huh. He wishes. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. We're getting off track. What was I saying? Oh, that's right. What matters? We freaks gotta stick together. And the best way to stick together is to keep an eye out for what drives us apart. You feel me? Yeah, you tell it like it is, Hancock! Now. What out there in our big, friendly commonwealth would want to drive us apart? What kind of twisted, unneighborly boogeyman would want to hurt our peaceful community? Yeah, the Institute and their sins. That's right. Who said that? Coming up to my office later, you've earned yourself some jet. The Institute. They're the real enemy. Not the Raiders. Not the super mutants. Not even those tools over in Diamond City. I don't know, Hancock. I'd sure love to give McDonough a kick in the ass. <laughs> hey, we all know I got my own personal beef with that lardhead. But stay focused. Now, I want everyone to keep the Institute in mind. When someone starts acting funny. When people are doing things they don't normally do. When family starts pushing you away for no reason. We all know who's behind that kind of shit. And the only way to stop it is to stick together. They can't control us if we're not afraid. Now, who's scared of the Institute? Not, not us. us! And which town in the Commonwealth should the Institute not fuck with? Good, good neighbor. neighbor! Good neighbor! And who's in charge of good neighbor? Hancock! Hey, of, of, of the people! For the people! people. Ma'am? You should stop <clears> on the store hey. to it. Daisy's dispute. What's up? Everything you need for the road. Whoever this Brotherhood of Steel is, I'm not buying that we come in peace malarkey. Cool vault suit, huh? Hell yeah! Mr. Valentine. Hey, Valentine. I Let's go talk to Amari. About the Lomi. May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Hmm. Amari's downstairs, you big flirt. Dr. Amari? Yes. I take it this isn't a social call. We need your help, Doctor. I need the memories from a man named Kellogg. But he's dead. I know it's asking for a miracle, Omari. But you've pulled off the impossible before. Are you too mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse. You don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. Please. Nick told me you're the only one who could make this work. This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this, and so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait. That's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? 
Ah, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Nick's an older model synth. Is he still compatible? That's exactly what I was thinking. If we are lucky, it should hook right in. But even if this works, Mr. Valentine would be taking on a tremendous amount of risk. We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about me, Amari. Let's do it. Hey, I appreciate this, Nick. You can thank me when we've found your son. All right, let's do this. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Valentine. Just sit down. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Let's see here. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. I'm static. I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. Tell me you have a way past this, Doctor. Let me think. The encryption is too strong for a single mind. But what if we use two? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host, while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. All right, let's get started. Just sit down over there, and keep your fingers crossed. See you on the other side. 